The feeling of loosening up. This was the flavor of being young in late 50s Britain. A country in transition, jiving away from an oldie dominated culture towards the swing of the 60s. It's tingling fresh. It's fresh as ice. It's Gibbs SR toothpaste. The tingling fresh toothpaste that does your gums good too. The tingling... I was sitting at home with my newly acquired television set and uh, suddenly the, they used to have starbursts on the screen. Starburst came and you know, one was jumping up and down saying, oh, oh, it's my head, it's my head, wow, wow, wow. It tells you something very important that you're doing your gums good and toughening them to resist infection. Every age has its symbol, and this one was synonymous with the affluence of late 1950s Britain. But unlike past symbols, it invaded the living room and took it over as the medium of pleasure, instruction and motivation. Not only was TV the badge of affluence, it multiplied the appetite for it by opening up a window into other people's lifestyles and by caressing those appetites directly through carefully crafted advertising. It quickened the changes that were already at last wrenching Britain finally out of the shadow of war. And with the disappearance of those old certainties, there was the beginnings of a less deferential, more acquisitive, less communal society, not at all sure of its place in the world. Even then, one had uh, David Ogilvy's famous dictum, the consumer's not a moron, she's your wife. Uh, and that was certainly said about that time and was said about television advertising in the States and something one felt very strongly about. But, uh, so I don't think we're thinking of people just as consumers. I think if you're looking at a social thing, I think we thought, and I still believe this incidentally, so, uh, that uh, television and advertising and that whole marketing thing whereby you put what people wanted first and then tried to get society or manufacturers to provide it uh, was a very powerful engine for change. And now back to Huey Green and Double Your Money. Always on our show, we ask a married couple to come up on the stage. This is the time in our program when we invite the married couple to see if two heads are better than one. Tonight, I want you to meet our oldest married couple. Here they are, coming on the stage. Commercial television had an immediate impact in the mid-50s. Unlike the short, sharp shock of Suez, this was a nightly balm. Entrepreneurs emerging from rationed and regulated Britain saw a pot of gold there for the grabbing. But culturally, wasn't there a downside? There's a lot in television from the start, commercial television, which was just going for the audience as fast as it could because that meant more advertising revenue and that is an appalling thing to have done. It's a conservative government that did it, of course, it's an appalling thing to have done to the best new instrument we had. You could have widened the BBC's mandate, you could have told the BBC to stop appointing so many Oxbridge people, you could have done things like that, but to bring in this kind of competition was fatal. The frivolity of independent television when it first went on the air was anathema to people like Richard Hobbit. But they are nannies, and the, Britain has a lot of nannies. Mary Whitehouse, uh, downwards, sideways, university people, uh, the church very often, constantly looking after our own, uh, other people's welfare. Uh, my view has always been that people can look after their own welfare, and that a bit of fun doesn't go amiss. Commercial television, I don't think, made Britain a better place or even a worse place to live in. What it did was it gave the public greater variety when it came to sitting at home viewing shows.
I'm Mrs. Sharples. I'm very pleased to meet you. I'm a neighbour. Oh. You're a widow woman? Well, yes. I thought so. I'm the caretaker at the Bad Tidings Hall. Oh, that's just across the street, isn't it? What's your place of worship? I don't really do much about it. Oh, I know. C of E. Oh, I wouldn't say oh it's like my really. sister's husband. You know, he was made out of the plumbing where they live, and it gave her ideas. She said, we're civic dignitaries now, we must head for church. Within a week, they were received, christened, and confirmed. Within a fortnight, she was sitting up all night sewing surplices. I'll take a packet of baking powder. Coronation Street was started not by any policy, or not by any commission, but by pure luck. It was called Florizel Street for a short while. Finally rechristened Coronation Street, and I vividly remember the board meeting at which it was discussed whether we should put it on or not. The sales director was against it, as he said, for debase Granada's name in television, putting on stuff like this, it's not going to attract viewers. Uh, the sort of non-execs or, or administrative members of the board, there really were six or seven of us, were against, but there were just a majority of one. Coronation Street was given, I think it was three or four slots to see what happened. And um, it was magic. 